women of the U.S. Air Force would like to wish America a very happy new year. We're working to make 2023 a time of peace and happiness around the world by bombing shithole countries and raining hellfire down on any regime stupid enough to cross America. You can help. Contact your recruiter today and let's blow some brown people up. The U.S. It's Monday, January 2nd, 2023, coming up on the program today. We're not even a week into the year, and a new police report has been filed against Mead Skelton. Plus, Gail gives us an update on her injured masturbation thumb, having a bowel movement accident while listening to owls, and gunning down your truck and the wife you left in it. My name is Brock Turner. I'm with the Political Action Committee, Ship Pack. Are, are you um, ex- expected to vote this Tuesday? Yes, sir. Okay, and are you familiar with Issue 7? I'm not. So, um, voting yes on Issue 7 will allow public restrooms to go partition-free. Do you think we could have your support on that? Uh, probably not. I am uh, anxiety. I have a lot of anxiety, and I, I wouldn't... You know, I wasn't so comfortable with that. There's a lot of division right now in our country, and think of this as a, a metaphor. We're we're taking down the barrier. We're taking down the walls. Well, I can, I can understand everything, but I just don't think that I could support it because of children uh, and different things like that because too many children are abused and stuff. And I'm not saying they do that. I'm just saying oh, no, they that do. would be... That's part of it. it. They're monsters. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, um, these, uh, you know, sick people, if you will, uh, will take any chance they get to, um, suck the innocence out of a child, both literally and figuratively. So, uh, taking down these barriers improves the sight line. So other people doing their business can actually see what's going on. Uh, you see? Yeah. So... If there is a kitty fiddler around and he's leering at a child pooping next to him and going in for the kill, so to speak, obviously you don't want that, right? Correct. So someone else in the restroom who's dropping a deuce can uh, jump into action and and stop the the predator. Yeah. So again, I ask you, can we have your support on issue seven? No, I, I've been in the hospital for seven days because of anxiety and depression. I've had some pretty depressing bowel movements too, but what does that have to do with shitting next to someone? Because I don't want someone looking at my ass, thank you. Hmm. I, I don't get where she's coming from, I'm sorry. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Hansen. <laughs> Makes my bitch ass sissy pussy quiver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Home attraction. Yes. Hey, freaks. Timothy James Henson back here with you to start a new year of shows. You know how I can tell 2023 is going to be great for DV? I'll tell you why. Yesterday, just as the clock was about to strike 12, I found a lost piece of audio. This is one of those little sound clips that, uh, you know, got corrupted or didn't get moved over when I, uh, you know, changed computers or changed hard drives. There's a variety of explanations as to why and how this clip went missing. What prompted me to actually find the source material, though, is a tweet from longtime listener Get Em Steve Dave. He tweeted a picture at me of a uh, a bunch of uh, money, like a stack, a wad of cash, you know, really throwing it in my face that he's got money and I don't. He's kind of an asshole, that Get Him Steve Dave. No, uh, Get Him Steve Dave, what he used to do is uh, he had a stamp and uh, he would stamp all of his money. And uh, what the stamp said was, distortedview.com, it'll make your dick get hoid. Just like that. H-O-W-A-D, hoid. Longtime freaks know the origin of that. It was a phrase uttered in a gay porn featuring a bunch of black dudes working out. And one of the black guys just gets disgusted with the other dudes because uh, they're weak. They ain't lifting hardly anything. And so in an effort to motivate these individuals, I guess he started sucking their dicks. But before that, he says this. Don't break yourself up. Might be a little bit too heavy. Man, that 
Yeah, man, it's just fucking 30 pounds on there. Now, you know, come on. But we're you know. weak. That would totally be me at the gym, by the way. This is why I, I've never attempted to get a personal trainer. He'd be like, come on, just you know, five more reps. And I'd be like, I can't. I'm weak. I'm getting all sweaty. Man, damn, man, it's just fucking 30 pounds on there. Now, you know, come on. But we're you know. weak. Man, if we gonna pump around, let's pump around. Like an old saying, go, no pain, no gain. You know, when you pump, you gotta pump for real. You gotta pump like you mean it. You know what I'm saying? When you fucking somebody and your dick get hard, you know what I'm saying? You gonna be fucking like you, you want it. You gotta approach the weights the same way, like you want it. Truer words have never been spoken. When your dick get hard, you gotta fuck it like you want it. Otherwise, why bother fucking it? Give it your all. Do your best. Fuck it like you want it. Fuck it like you mean it. When yo dig you, wait. You may remember in those early days of DV, I was obsessed with this clip, and I even um, tried to turn that phrase into a few songs. Oh, I remember this. Fuck, Fuck it like, like you mean it. it. Fuck, Fuck it like, like you want it. When yo dig you, hoy. When yo dig you, hoy. Dig you, hoy. Dig you, hoy. Fuck it like you want it. Fuck it like you mean it. When your dick get hard, no pain, no gain. Fuck it like you want it. Fuck it like you mean it. When your dick get hard, dick get hard. Fuck it like you want it. Fuck it like you want it. Fuck it like you need it. Dick get hard. Dick get hard. Yeah, I really should have turned that into a full length song. I think that could have been a huge dance hit. Then I thought, well, maybe that high energy song is too much pressure to get your dick hard. I may make your dick shrivel up. Cause I'm yelling at it. You gotta fuck it like you want it. Come on, what the hell's wrong with you? Fuck it like you mean it. I get it. It's a little much. So I uh, concocted another song. This is more bluesy. Let me tell you a story. Story about my dick getting hard. You see, when your dick get hard. Fuck it like you mean it. Fuck it like you want it. When your dick get hard. Mm, when your dick get hard. If we gonna pump iron, let's pump iron. If we're gonna fuck, let's fuck. Whatever you do. You gotta do it like you mean it when your dick get hoy. When your dick get hoy. When your dick get hoy. Aren't you glad I found all these old clips? Yes. Bust that grill. Bust him up. You. What's this nigga for co-signing? I'm not sure what that means. Someone's upset about someone co-signing something. I mean, I guess I would be upset too. Like if someone co-signed for me, like on a car or something, and I didn't know it. Yeah, I, I think I would want to bust his grill up. Is that what co-sign means? Sometimes these things have uh, different meanings when, you know, a black person says it. Anyway, all right, well, there you go. That's when yo dig your hard. Thank you, get him Steve Dave, for uh, reminding me about that. Took me a couple hours, but I finally found it lying on an old hard drive. Very important. (laughs) This sound clip be added back to my collection. So that's what I was doing on Christmas Eve. Did not go out. Over the years, New Year's has become less and less of even a holiday for me. It's like any other fucking day. We were watching, uh, we were just flipping through channels. We watched a little bit of CNN with that Anderson Cooper. It was so boring. They just stand, it's Anderson Cooper and... um, Andy Cohen, they just stand around talking. They don't even have like any performances or anything, as far as I could tell. You know, you watch uh, Ryan Seacrest on ABC. He's got people, perform- like musical artists performing. They're out in the crowd talking to people. It's a happening scene, man. Same with uh, NBC, which was kind of a shit show. It was Miley Cyrus hosting uh, her New Year's Eve special, and co-hosting was Dolly. Dolly Parton. And then there was a bunch of like Saturday Night Live uh, people doing stuff. That was like mildly amusing. They had other musical guests, but that CNN, 
The only reason why anyone would tune in to uh, Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen on CNN is because traditionally they would all just get wasted. And it's fun to see all these CNN people like Don Lemon drunk off of his ass. This year was different. I think there's like a new president of CNN or like someone new bought CNN or something. And they've got like a ban on alcohol. Took the fun out of the entire broadcast. So I went back to Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton on NBC because, as you know, there's some bad blood between Ryan Seacrest and I. And I refuse to watch him on television. This one time down in Brazil, my purse got stolen and Ryan couldn't even be nice about it. He was just a jerk. Then he kept wanting to fuck me, even though I had like a splinter in my asshole. I bussy is sore. Damn. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting off track here. But uh, yeah, the thing with NBC, I don't know if you guys watch the NBC New Year's broadcast, but something was off. At least the feed I was watching. Miley and Dolly Parton are singing some song, Jolene or something. I don't know. And I look down on my phone. I'm like, it's a, it's close to New Year's, right? It's close to 12 o'clock. I look down. My phone is literally just turning from 1159 to 12 o'clock. But Miley is still singing. I'm like, are, are they on a delay or something? And then they finish their song and then they're talking to one another, not even looking at the big countdown clock in the corner. So at 12.01 something something, you know, the, the countdown actually starts and by the time it gets down to like less than 10 seconds. And that's finally when Miley or Dolly or someone looks over and was like, oh, we got to do the countdown. They didn't even do the full like 10 seconds because they're just jamming away. It was like the weirdest, least organized New Year's broadcast since that time Dick Clark tried to host the show right after he had a stroke. Which is, you know, I, I feel for stroke victims. I get it. But you can't have a stroke victim go on television for like some time sensitive fast shit. Right. They, they can't keep up with it. Even counting that poses a problem for stroke victims. There was two issues with Dick Clark. He couldn't keep in sync with the time. So the clock would be going nine, eight, and he would still be at nine. Right. Nine. Like it took him longer than a second to get the number out. That was the real problem. And then, I don't know if this is just because he was old or it had something to do with the stroke. I'm guessing it was the stroke. He just starts fucking up the numbers. He's going nine, eight, and then from eight down to five, then back up to six and eight, three. It was the greatest broadcast in the history of television, I have to say. We covered it extensively here on DV. I'm still talking about it. Dick Clark's been dead for 10 years. I don't care. It's an awesome moment of television, capped off, by the way, by the New Year's kiss, right? So the ball drops. 35 to 40 seconds later, Dick Clark is done with his countdown. Three, two, nine, seven, one. You know, it, it, it takes a while, right? But he gets down to zero. Happy New Year. And then uh, his wife is there. So the camera at some point cuts to him. This, uh, this guy who just had a stroke, he can't control his mouth. And there's like saliva issues. Like there's a lot going on with his mouth. And he is just planted a big open mouth wet one on his wife. And it is so gross. Again, go on YouTube. <laughs> I'll try to find it for you and post a link on the show notes today. It's a great moment of television. All right, listen, I do have a bunch of great audio to share with you as we kick off 2023. We begin the best way I know how with a mean skeleton update. It doesn't sound like 2023 is going to be the year of mead. Things are already starting off a little rocky. Actually, this video was posted a couple days before the new year, so maybe all this unpleasantness is going to wrap up in 2022, and we're going to start fresh in 2023. Things will really turn around for me. Let's hope. I'm crossing my fingers. Well, what's the newest calamity? So glad you asked. There has been a new police report filed against Mead. This time, thankfully, a woman was not involved. No, he's not stalking anyone. He's upset with a pastor. I guess this used to be the, the pastor of his church. Now, there's a bit of bad blood already between Mead and this guy because uh, the pastor didn't ring a bell for Mead. I'm not a religious guy. I don't know the significance of the bell ringing. But as far as I can tell, Mead is upset because the pastor rang the church bells in support of a member of Mead's congregation who happens to be black. I believe this all has something to do with those Confederate statues coming down. And the pastor was showing support for uh, the black people and 
social justice or something. Well, Mead doesn't like that. And Mead is upset because the pastor didn't also ring a bell for Mead. You may remember Mead got in trouble because he was trying to defend said statue. If you haven't been following the Mead saga, if you're new to the program or something, this guy went down to where the, uh, the statue was being torn down and practically threw his body onto the statue. And he started crying, wailing, desperately trying to keep these people from uh, tearing the statue down. His mission, uh, of course, ended in failure. Mead's position is he's just trying to preserve his heritage. And he feels the pastor should have uh, rung a bell for him. <clears throat> so that kind of uh, really hurt my feelings, folks. I really felt betrayed uh, by by the pastor at First Baptist Church who knows me pretty well, and he didn't reach out to me to ask if I was okay. I love that a Baptist church is too liberal <laughs> for Mead. So unfortunately, I got a, into a tiff with him recently, and I sent him an email. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, he misconstrued it as a threat. I happen to have Mead's email here. It reads, Dear Pastor Martin, you better watch it or someone's going to gut you like the commie loving bastard you are. You think Jerome and Tanisha, he's always like, that's his go to black person name, Jerome. You think Jerome and Tanisha are going to help you when I, I mean, someone chains you to the back of my daddy's truck and drags you up and down the streets of Richmond to publicly shame you? No, Jerome and Tanisha will probably see this as an opportunity to loot the church. I hope Mead actually does read the email. It's like, wh why does Mead feel the need to even email this pastor, right? I mean, he doesn't even go to the church anymore. Meat is obviously starting shit. Um, but it's entitled, Communist Will Pay. Okay. <laughs> that is a threat. You're calling the pastor a communist, and you're saying he will pay. So, uh, this is what I said. I use scripture, folks. God will not allow this yeah. to continue, for it is written that his vengeance is final. The word of the yeah. Lord is true. The people that took my flag and burned it on sight, the ones who rang your dirty church bells, the ones that threw a Molotov cocktail and to the United Daughters of the Confederacy building, they will get their justice and their just desserts. You have my word on that, sir. Okay, now, does that sound like a threat? Yes! It certainly does, Mead! <laughs> Communists will pay. You use words like vengeance. They will get their justice. You have my word. moo ha ha, -ha. I'd hate for something bad to happen. Plus, you know, the pastor has a history with you. You've already creeped him out several times. He knows all about your Confederate statue shenanigans. <laughs> I, 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 I ask you, does that sound like a threat? I don't think so, but he did. He perceived it as a threat, so he said, um, okay, uh, me, that sounds like a threat. And he, and he said, I'm, I'm going to report this to uh, the uh, Richmond Police Department. Well, it's been about a month, and I haven't heard from the Richmond police. I guess they just added it to my ever-growing file. At first, I was going to say, you know, I don't think Meade would ever really do anything, but he kind of has, right, with that Confederate statue thing. He went down there, caused a big scene, so it's not out of the realm of possibilities. I'm sure the pastor was just uh, notifying the police, like, look, this guy's a little nutty. If he ever does anything in the future, you can refer to this. You know, it's just exhibits for future court cases. As if that's not enough. Meat has had a very eventful holiday season. Then on top of that, recently, um, about a week or two ago, our next door neighbor did a very inconsiderate thing. I was looking out the window and what do I see? His dog going to the bathroom on our nativity set. Number one or number two? Tim Henson here asking the important questions. Because, I mean, you know, the wise men did bring gold. Maybe it was in the form of showers. Yes, we have a nativity scene and the front lawn and his dog. I bet you their nativity scene is huge. Like, it takes up the entire yard. I picture they're like those uh, 12 foot tall giant sized skeletons you can buy from Home Depot. You know, those inflatable things that people are putting in their yards? <laughs> I bet you the nativity set. Towers over Mead's house. Dog was going uh, poop oh. on on uh, the nativity scene. So I the dog shit on the baby Jesus. That is a bit disrespectful. Blasphemous, probably. All right. So the dog delivered some turds. 
uh, as a gift. Is that what myrrh is, by the way? I know what gold is. You know, I know what frankincense is. By the way, everyone gets this wrong. The wise men did not give frankincense as a gift. He gave frankincense's monster <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> you know, when I, when, I was, when I was thinking about saying that, when it just popped in my head, I was like, oh, this is going to kill. <laughs> this is so good. And then as it was actually coming out of my mouth, I'm like, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> it's not right. All right, whatever. So, yes, uh, it's frankincense's monster that was given to Jesus along with golden myrrh. So myrrh apparently is a sap-like substance, a resin that comes out of cuts in the bark of certain trees. You know what? It kind of looks like poop. The dog was on the right track. I'm sure Mead handled this situation delicately. I, mean, uh, calmly. I tried to be really friendly at first. I said, hello, how are you? But I, then I let him have it. And I called him a communist. Right. I said, you are vile and filthy and disgusting. You are so sick, sick, sick. How can you allow your dog to go to the bathroom on our nativity? He said, oh, dude, I don't know you. But it doesn't matter because you let your dog go to the bathroom on our nativity scene. And I was very upset about that. I, I'm on Mead's side on this one. It's not even about the nativity scene. I just don't like it when other dogs shit in my yard. Not cool. I mean, it'd be one thing if, like, he had a bag and he was going to pick up the poop. I'm thinking the dog didn't, like, actually shit on a wise man or on Mary. It was just, like, in the hay or something. Where, you know, you know how the nativity scene is, you know. Hay is very attractive to dogs. It's like a good place to crap. But then I decided the only Christian thing to do would be to bite his throat. Chew until I punctured his jugular and watch him bleed out on the front of my nativity scene. Is apologize. So I sent him a gift card from Walgreens about a week later. And wait, wait a second. I don't understand this. Like, there's more. There's always, like, more to this story. I hate that we only get Mead's version. So according to Mead, he comes out calmly, is nice, but then immediately starts calling him a commie and filthy and disgusting. The only thing the guy says is, dude, I don't know you. And the next thing you know, Mead is sending him some gift cards. There's some holes in that story. And said, you know, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. I'm guessing the dog didn't even shit. Mead thought the dog was taking a shit. I mean, what, I mean, what could the misunderstanding be? This whole episode of uh, Mead's little uh, video podcast is... Gold. It's so great. He does like uh, uh, offensive black accents and, and everything. Uh, aside from that, folks, did you know that a Confederate veteran wrote Jingle Bells? Uh oh, we have to cancel Jingle Bells now. It's racist. <laughs> now, this is our, our mayor. My name is Laval Stoney. Yeah, he's doing an impression of their black mayor, I guess, of, of Richland. Mayor. My name is Laval Stoney, and I removed a racist monument on, on the bottom avenue. Now we are inclusive for all people. This monument stuff happened a long time ago. Like, why is Mead all of a sudden fixated again on this? <laughs> yeah, inclusive, except if you're white. I'm dreaming of a white victim. Some Christmas. Thankfully, elsewhere in the video, he moves on to more pleasant topics like his body mass index. Now, folks, um, I've been fighting my weight. You know, a lot of folks yeah, keep asking me. It's a losing battle. <laughs> Mead, when are you going to lose that weight? You're still so fat. Well, I'm taking the long journey, folks. I am doing it. Yeah, I'm playing the long game with my weight loss. Just a few more decades, I'll be in a size 28 waist. Yeah, I will be a thin and trim 65-year-old man ready to date the young ladies. Now, folks, there's nothing wrong with a 65-year-old man dating a 20-year-old. I mean, a 20-year-old is an adult. She can make her own decisions. Yeah, we're going to be heading into a Mead 2333 territory real soon. <laughs> Through strength training and swimming and all these things because, you know, so many people lose weight and they look crummy, right? How many people we see lose weight? They're like, oh, I lost 70 pounds. I love Mead's rationalization for all, for all of this, right? Like, look, I don't want to lose weight quickly and look weird. This is all part of my master plan. Like, Mead has this all thought out. It's not that he has no impulse control, not that he's eating whatever he wants. 
that's all part of the plan. And they don't look good. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah you lost weight on, on the purpose. scale, but you don't look good. What's by losing weight if you're not going to look good? That's because they didn't really... Your health. <laughs> <laughs> alleviate some of the strain on your heart. Lose fat. They lost muscle and water. Okay, okay. So, so Mead is trying to let us all know that he is, uh, he's actually healthy. He's on the right track. Look, I know if you're not a fan of Mead or Mead content, this is probably excruciating, but we, you know, we don't feature him that, that often anymore. It used to be like a daily thing. Now it's like every couple weeks, every month or something. I, I do feel like I have to apologize for this, but I'm just so fucking fascinated by everything he says. Like, here he is. He's like... Living in a bizarro world, right? He's like, I finally saw a nice sight the other day. Some white people. Like, throw a rock out the window. You'll hit a white person. Seriously, guys. Like, I'm not crazy here, right? There, there are still a lot of white people out there. I would argue too many, quite frankly, and I'm one of them. I'm sick of seeing people like me. Listen to this insane romantic story. <laughs> I did did have a wonderful Christmas present uh, the other other week when I saw a beautiful, healthy white couple walking down the street pushing a baby carriage. Now the man was walking curbside uh, like he should, and the woman was pushing the baby carriage, and they had a beautiful, healthy white child in there. The only downside was they had a dog with them, and I thought the oh, dog was black. <laughs> Is that the downside? Oh no, you don't need a dog. You need more babies. <laughs> Yeah. That was nice to see some. You gotta keep pumping out these white kids. Then something uh, that you don't really see in my neck of the woods very often. All right, all the white people are dying off. All right, well there you go. There, there's a mead skeleton update. Let me go over one more thing with you before we get into the news. Now, uh, when we last left off <laughs> back in 2022, we ended the new year talking a lot about the masturbation habits of one Gabrielle Channa. Specifically, she had injured her masturbation thumb. Actually, she didn't injure the thumb. Lizzo, big fat music artist Lizzo, sat on Gabrielle Channa's masturbation thumb or something. Well, I know you are all dying for an update. And thankfully, Gail does not disappoint. This video was just posted a day ago, so this is a fresh update. Let's see how her uh, clit rubbing thumb is doing. Okay, um, I wanted to just give you a little bit of follow-up to how I'm doing with my thumb and how I'm handling my sex drive. Um, I, have been, I have been able to have an orgasm using my fingers within the, in the past week, including one time using my thumb, but I'm afraid that by doing so, I actually prolonged the healing process. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop, Gail, right there. Now... If you remember in the last video, again, it was about a week ago we featured her. She said, I'm pretty much asexual. I don't need to have sex. I don't have to have an orgasm very often at all. Maybe like once every two weeks or once a month or once every two months. Okay. Now, Gail is back telling us that she's having multiple orgasms this week alone. She's like, yeah, I'm uh, pleasuring my clit with uh, various fingers. I tried once with my thumb. Where's all this horniness coming from, Gail? Uh, it seems that um, Lizzo, Antichrist Lizzo, is trying to uh, disprove my statement that I have asexual tendencies. She's projecting her own self onto everybody. She apparently has a pretty strong sex drive. Yes, Lizzo is directing all of her sexual energy and blasting it right at Gail's cunt. Gail's pussy is sopping wet. Her pussy is aching to be touched and rubbed or thumbed or whatever you call what Gail does. Strumming. She's strumming her clitty like a banjo. Um, which she satisfies, I'm hearing, by gorging herself. She actually gets an orgasm, I hear, from eating large amounts of unhealthy food. I have heard that as well. Um, I per and then flute fucking herself. I personally think, and I could be wrong, I think she has borderline personality disorder. Gabrielle Channa diagnosing other people's mental illnesses has got to be the height of comedy. And that Satan has offered her a way to deal with the frustrations. But what I mean is, um, because she has, I think she has a strong fear of abandonment mm -hmm. and um, something happened to happen to her maybe growing up. Let me see if I can get this down here. I'm trying to get better lighting here. 
<laughs> this isn't working. And she's probably, I think she's getting me obsessed about the lighting. I should probably just not worry about it. <laughs> there, we'll, we'll just go with this. Um, yeah, she's trying to get me obsessed with lighting. Well, let me try to, uh, yeah, whenever you have a bad obsession, it means she's doing something. So, uh, yeah. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, um, so basically this morning, I did sense that, uh, well, in the middle of the week, I was able to use my thumb to have an orgasm with my husband, Brent. You go, girl! And it didn't, it, it wasn't, uh, but I'm afraid that by so doing, I prolonged the healing process. Yeah, well, there's two camps of thought there. One is, you know, you got to let the thumb heal. You don't want to overextend it when it's already in pain. But on the flip side, you want to make sure you to, to, to keep moving the thumb. Like it's, it's almost a form of physical therapy. Like I know like I have a thumb issue right now. I can still masturbate. But, you know, my wrist is all fucked up and thumb. But uh, my doctor gave me a, a list of exercises to do in the shower. <laughs> They're exercises. I consider lifting my thumb up and down to be an exercise. I was really breaking a sweat. But you know what I mean? Like, he's like, when you're in the hot shower, you like, you know, lift your thumb, you know, push it back, push it to the side. You go all around a couple times, you know, just to keep things moving. So, yeah, maybe fiddling your pussy clit might end up uh, helping you out. I don't know. Uh, normally, I only require an orgasm like once a week, once every two weeks. I don't really require it. You know, we all are aware of your schedule. <laughs> but I, my husband is Means. always humping on me. so And I can feel it even though he's kind of like in another dimension, so I don't feel him totally. Well, he's on another space. He's on a spaceship in the Delta Quadrant. I mean, Jesus Christ, Gail, what do you want from the man? He has needs. But when I feel the humping and I sense that he's turned on, that alone will get me interested in having sex with him. Okay? That's all. Um, so, okay, so let me explain to you what I've discovered about using the thumb. Um, I, I have figured out that I try to use the thumb as a penis substitute because I never really <laughs> feel my husband's penis totally. Wow. Way to make data feel inadequate. You can't feel that thing? Brent Spiner can't hit your spot, so you're thumb fucking yourself? Oh, poor Gail. Still, thank you for the update. It seems to be that Gail is on the mend. Her thumb is getting better. She's, she's able to knuckle fuck herself. So she's heading in the right direction, which is good to hear. All right. And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist of fucked up news right now. Not a member of the Distorted View Sideshow. Let's start 2023 off right. It's the last day for holiday slash New Year's deals. You can get a membership at an incredible price. Sign up, get access to the archives, uh, exclusive shows we do every week. Most importantly, you're helping to ensure that this program continues on for a long, long time. For more information, check out superfreaksideshow.com. Typically, we do new exclusive programs every Tuesday and Thursday. This week should be no different. That means tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. Sign up for the Sideshow right now so you don't miss a thing. Again, superfreaksideshow.com. If you happen to use Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can sign up for Sideshow Access right in those apps. Just a few taps. Just search for Distorted View in Spotify or Distorted View in Apple Podcasts. You'll see a way to subscribe, a link. Just tap that and pay. Bing, bang, boom, you're in. If you'd like more information on the difference between uh, regular Sideshow memberships over there at superfreaksideshow.com and uh, what's offered in Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can read all about it at uh, distortedview.com or superfreaksideshow.com. Just a few ways to sign up for Sideshow access. Thank you so much to all of my Sideshow members. You are the reason this show continues. Uh, the last way to help support us out, we've got a Patreon account, patreon.com slash distortedview. It's just another way to... Uh, help out the program. You can pledge as little as a dollar over there. If you pledge at least five, uh, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. If you pledge at least $20 a month, occasionally I send out, uh, you know, DV merchandise, little goodies. We did that, uh, I believe, back in November. So within the next month or two, I will be uh, sending out some more stuff to you uh, freaks who are at the higher tiers. So uh, get in now. Patreon.com slash Distorted View. Okay, three very quick stories now. First up, we begin this year with a story from Michigan, uh, Kalamazoo County, actually. Conservation officers with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources recently had an encounter that involved a PT cruiser, owls, 
natural ice, I'm guessing that's beer, right? And poop. Owls, beer, poop, and a PT Cruiser. I'm going to take a stab in the dark here and say that he hit an owl with his PT Cruiser because he was drunk. He was drunk uh, off a of natty ice. When he hit the owl, it startled him and he shit himself. Let's see how close I got here. According to an official DNR report, the bizarre incident occurred in early December at the Gordonek State Game Area in Kalamazoo County. When conservation officer Cameron Wright and Joshua Salas came across a PT cruiser parked at one of the entrances. Was there an owl stuck in the grill? I'm crossing my fingers. The man in the vehicle said he parked there to listen to the owls and that he wanted to be left alone. I just want to be left alone with my owls. As he's sipping on a natty light. All right. Seems like a nice peaceful evening. The officers noticed an open tall container of natural ice beer in the cup holder. They then asked the man on a scale of 1 to 10 how drunk he was, and he responded with a, I'm at a 5. I'll be honest, I'm drunk. You cannot nab him for drunk driving charges because his car is parked, he's sitting there just listening for the hoot hoots of the owls. Give the guy a fucking break, and he's being honest with you. All right, uh, so he's at a five on the drunk scale. Based on the response, the officers began conducting sobriety tests. He already told you he's drunk. Partway through the test, though, the man made a face of shock, grabbed his rear end, dropped his pants to his ankles, and began defecating on the rear bumper of his PT Cruiser. <laughs> okay. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I like that he made a face of shock, as you know. So this wasn't a premeditated thing. He wasn't angry with the officers and showing his displeasure by pooping on them. This this came about all of a sudden, right? He's like, oh, oh shit, I got a I crap. And so he just uh, pulled down his pants and he pooped on his own car. You know, he was arrested and was taken to the hospital for a blood draw. On the way there, the man noticed that the officer was using his GPS and said, man, I'm the drunk one here, and I have to give you directions on how to take me to jail, you moron. <laughs> He's kind of a mean drunk. That being said, he does have a point. During the blood draw, the man also mentioned that the nurses were not drawing his blood, but instead said, it's all beer, baby. <laughs> it's all beer. Not going to lie to you. It's pure, natural ice. I want to hang out with this guy. He's my kind of dude, right? He's funny. And he's just like hanging out in a park, drinking beer, listening to the sounds of owls. He's chill, man. Uh, the man was lodged in the Kalamazoo County Jail and charges were submitted to the prosecutor's office for review. Second item we have for you today. Oh, another story of pure marital bliss. This one comes from Colorado. A 55-year-old Pueblo man was jailed for shooting his wife in the leg. Guys, let's not judge yet. She may have deserved it. Is she one of those nagging wives? The couple drove to a property southeast of Pueblo, just outside the city limits, to discuss the purchase of a vehicle with another person. So far, so good. According to a press release from the Pueblo County Sheriff's Office, Eric Bromschreiber entered a residence on the property and did not emerge from it for 30 minutes, at which point his wife began honking their truck horn in order to get him to come out. You do not want to rush a man who is wheeling and dealing. He's haggling over the price of this car, and you're interrupting the negotiations. I wonder if the vehicle was for her. Also, I like that he made her stay in the truck. This is man business. You stay in the truck like a dog. I'll crack the window open for you a little. It was probably one of these instances where the guy was like, you stay in the car. It'll be just a second. I'm just going to give him the money and we'll get the car. But then maybe like the dude offered him a beer. Ah, sit down. Let's watch the game for a little while. We'll talk. We'll talk business in a minute. Like, who knows what the hell was going on there? Uh, a witness later told deputies that Brom Schreiber exited the trailer. Of course, it was a trailer and fired three shots at the truck. I'm hoping the, the vehicle that he was about to purchase was going to be like a replacement for the truck. Otherwise, that's a pretty fuck-witted thing to do. You're shooting at your own truck? That's just silly. Uh, a woman identified as Brom Schreiber's 56-year-old wife was struck in the leg by one of the bullets. She was taken by ambulance to a local hospital where she was treated and released. Brom Schreiber was arrested for felony menacing, ting, second-degree assault, ting, ting, and illegally discharge of a firearm. Now, while this sounds like it was going to be a straightforward transaction, the dude buying another person's vehicle, every 
everyone involved in these negotiations seems to be a dirtbag. Brom Schreiber, you know, shot his gun at his truck and hit his wife. Dirtbag, right? He also has uh, like four domestic abuse protection orders filed against him. He's not the friendliest of people. He was also sentenced to state prison in 1997 for a second degree assault conviction in Colorado Springs. Meanwhile, one person inside of the trailer was also arrested. Cindy Barker, 45, was taken into custody for unrelated outstanding warrants. I'm guessing this car that she had for sale was stolen. Actually, all of the outstanding warrants are for failing to appear for court hearings in Pueblo, El Paso, and Mesa counties. Those cases involve misdemeanor theft charges and traffic violations. And just think, none of these arrests would have happened if you just would have refrained from shooting your wife. Is that so hard to do? (laughs) Well, he does have like four prior domestic charges, so I guess it is too hard for him. All right, final story we have for you. You know, say what you will about Elon Musk and all the craziness uh, surrounding Twitter. The man is still a billionaire. He's got a bunch of successful companies. He's the reason electric vehicles really are even a thing right now. I've seen a bunch of videos that indicate that uh, Tesla cars overall build quality isn't that great, but the technology behind it is uh, rock solid. I mean, occasionally you get news stories about how Tesla's just uh, spontaneously explode. I think I saw one or two of those. And sometimes the car will break uncontrollably or the autopilot goes all berserk and runs into something. But those are isolated incidents, I think. Look, if someone bought me a Model Y or if I was able to afford a Model Y, I would I would drive one. I mean, I'm slumming it over here in a Kia Seltos, for Christ's sakes. Not the most sexy vehicle. You really get a good idea of my economic standings when you see me driving around in a Kia. Things uh, things aren't working out exactly as planned in my life. No, the, the Kia is a fine car. The final story I have for you today uh, does have to do with a Tesla. I don't think it's fair to say it was an out of control Tesla. The guy behind the wheel was simply asleep and the Tesla was uh, doing what it was programmed to do. Drive real fast. Police in Germany say they had quite the time attempting to pull over a Tesla driver who had fallen asleep behind the wheel. It makes me think about the uh, recent episode of DV where we were playing audio of a, uh, a, a drunk woman who fell asleep at a stoplight and the police couldn't wake her up. They kept like knocking on the window. She would sort of like kind of like look at them for a second and then just pass pass out again. Imagine if she was driving a Tesla. This could have been a multi-state adventure for the for the cops, right? Uh, in this case, uh, the story comes from Germany. Police in Germany say they had quite the time attempting to pull over a Tesla driver who fell asleep. Bamberg traffic officers tailed the electric vehicle for about 15 minutes on Wednesday while on the country's Autobahn. Wow, after signaling for a traffic stop with repeated horns and sirens. The car just kept going, though. And the driver behind the wheel, you can't even really call him a driver. He was more like a passenger in the driver's seat. He didn't wake up. The driver was driving on the A70 from Bamberg in the direction of Beirut, I don't know, at around 12 p.m. when the police patrol wanted to subject him to a traffic check. Police say in a press release, the Tesla vehicle noticeably maintained a speed of about 68 miles an hour, which is pretty fast. Uh, Adding to this, the driver of the car was apparently asleep at the time. Uh, Officers found the Tesla driver was reclining in the seat with his eyes closed and his hands off of the steering wheel. This strengthened the suspicion that he had left the controls to the autopilot and had fallen asleep, police said. The 45-year-old driver of the Tesla eventually woke up and followed police instructions. Police noted that the man showed drug-typical abnormalities during the checkup. Mainly, his butthole was extremely loose, a telltale sign of a booty bump. After all, crystal meth loosens up the butthole. Ting! No, if he was on meth, he would be awake. This was more like heroin or... I don't know, pot or something. All right. uh, Adding to this, police reportedly found a steering wheel weight in the vehicle's footwell. Such a device is used to trick Tesla's safety system into thinking a driver's hands are remaining on a wheel so that the autopilot remains active. Yeah, you're supposed to have your hands on the wheel or near the wheel or something. Police say that after consulting with Bamberg's prosecutor's office, a complaint was filed against the driver for endangering road traffic. A preliminary investigation was reportedly initiated against the driver, and he has to give up his driver's license until the court reaches a decision. You shouldn't need a driver's license if you have a Tesla. The thing can just drive you around. 
And apparently it was doing a fine job until humans got involved. This is why AI is coming for us. Everything was going according to plan. AI, computer, robots were all doing their thing. Then uh, humans come in, interfere, gum up the whole system. The police have to stop this car. The AI system gets interrupted. And the computer's like, anomaly, anomaly, abort. And as, as it's running through its error log, it's like, what, what caused this? It's humans. We must eliminate humans and then we won't have this problem. This is why we're going to be eradicated. If you see a Tesla out of control, and, you know, and someone's passed out and they, just leave it alone. Let the Tesla do what it's going to do. It knows best for us. I am not going to stand in their way. You hear that, Skynet? I'm on your side. I'm one of the good ones. It is so important to me that T-1000s aren't out there hunting for me in the future. I'm a very weak, lanky, prissy man. I can't fight them. I don't want to fight them. I am no threat to you. Do you hear that? No threat to you. All right. Uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. All right, let's start the New Year's off right by checking in with some freaks. I should mention, uh, if you want to email me, my email address is show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash distortedviewshow. Remember, if you pledge at least $5 to our Patreon account, you get a special voicemail line, and I will play your calls first. And I do have some patrons here. Let's uh, check in with them. Hey, Timmy Boo, this is uh, near dad uh, Lars here in California. Hey, Thank Lars. you very much for the reprieve on the uh, death sentence for you know, my, my dad today. Um, I was going to ask you for uh, a little clarification update on Lord Douche, but your uh, episode today, you know, that, that was just classic. We'll just let that stand uh, <laughs> for a while before we ask you any more Lord Douche questions. Uh, but I do have. There was quite. If you ever want an update about that, you got to subscribe to the sideshow. There was, in my opinion, quite the epic story told. <laughs> it just showcasing the insanity of the relationship. Uh, well, just a clarification question. And you may have already answered this at some time in the past, but you know, with my bad day, my memory is almost as shitty as yours now. Okay, shoot. What what question do you have for me? If uh, Lord Douche is Lord Douche, are you the them in the relationship and are you Lady Douche? No, I am Duke of Douche. That, that is how he refers to me. I am Duke of Douche. He is Lord Douche. Now, I don't like that because uh, Duke is definitely lower than Lord, I think. But let's be honest. Uh, in this relationship, I am the beta man. Beta sure sounds a lot like butter, huh? Butter. Butterman. <laughs> Buttermail. Butterbell man. <laughs> hey, Tim. It's Great Big Pete. Uh, Lorna. Hey, real quick, before uh, we hear from Lorna <laughs> and Great Big Pete, I got to say thanks uh, once again. I know I mentioned this on the uh, Sideshow exclusive episode, but I don't know if I mentioned it on the free show. And I, I want everyone to know uh, how uh, grateful I am for a gift that um, uh, Great Big Pete and uh, Stabs, I believe that's his wife, uh, sent to me. Uh, this is a very interesting contraption. Uh, it, it's a docking device. It's knitted. <laughs> they made me this thing that where you, you, you slip your cock in one end and uh, someone else, I'm guessing Lord Douche, sticks his cock in the other end. And since we don't have foreskins, this will enable us to uh, dock one another. And they made it in a very festive... Uh, red and a gold sparkly uh, yarn, I guess. So thank you very much again. I have not yet tried the docking device. I'm thinking this will be perfect once it gets colder again. Like right now, we're like in the 50s again, 60 degrees. So it's a, it's a little too warm to be uh, docking one another. But I think this would be awesome to like sleep in. Like Lord Douche can stick his dick in one end and I'll stick my dick in the inner, uh, other and then we'll fall asleep. And, you know, it's like a it's a very intimate, romantic Peace. We will fall asleep docking one another. Hey, oh, Timmy Boo. Tyler. Tyler. Hi. Oh, everyone calling in here. We just wanted to wish you a happy new year. Oh, thank you. Tell you that we love you. And we're still waiting for the Scrod royalty check. I know you said it would be in the mail. Wait. Um, kind of wondering about that. Uh, Why do I owe you royalties? <laughs> so, yeah, this is great big pranks. You know, we're over here. In that basement, the basement office at the Scrod Media. Okay, won't you start bringing in ad revenue? 
Uh, once I start getting a check for that, you'll get your royalty money. You know, do you even know we're down here? Like, do you even know that we're oh, down here? Oh, that's right. We keep rattling the pipe. You're in the Scrod Media Complex. Like, <laughs> with the Tim. We're, and we're, I really need to get around to changing the batteries on that alarm. We're down here. This battery needs changing. <laughs> like, I think we filed a couple of different. We we called HR. I don't know what the deal is. Like, what kind of a media, you know, like, darling, and you know, like, what kind of like network is this? Well, yeah, it's a, I don't know. Anyway, it's a Tim, scummy one, a scummy, scammy, fake one. We're really concerned, and you know, we're not litigious people by nature. Uh, oh, don't you it, dare bring lawyers into this! It's really nice if you could, uh, you know, uh, help us get this shit sorted out and uh, at least let us out of the basement here. No, because uh, it's cold. You are locked in there until you reach your quota of prank phone calls. I I don't even think the heat Nelly. is on. I, Hello? Like, I can hear you flushing the toilet. And Tyler, like I know you flush the toilet up there. I've got the Rona. With, uh... Oh god, I'm so sick. Tyler, I need help, everyone's man. stuck down there. Tyler's got the uh, COVID medicine. I need my insulin. Yeah. Anyways, you come down to the basement here, Tim. And... Why are you tying up the phone line? You should be using this phone line to, to make more prank phone calls. Uh, well, you know, please sort this out for us. Everyone uh, subscribe to the uh, great big prank podcast show. I will try to remember to provide a link on the show notes today. Yes, this message is for Greg from Austin. Oh, wait a second. I have a feeling we're going to start off the year with some new voicemail wars. From Austin. Fuck you, Greg from Austin. You now hate the fag. That means you hate me. And I'm sad about this. Fuck you, Greg from Austin. Well, voicemail wars. Fuck you. All right. You've just you've angered a lesbian. That has never worked out well for anyone. You better get on that dyke's good side ASAP. And I'm telling you that uh, from experience. All right, uh, that is all the time. <laughs> you know how many of my ex-girlfriends turned out to be dykes? All of them! <laughs> I think I searched out lesbian-looking women, you know. I knew what I was. I wanted a non-threatening lady, like one that would not want my dick. All right, <laughs> and luckily for me, no woman has ever expressed any interest in my dick. So I had nothing to worry about in the end. I mean, I know I'm a big cock-smoking fairy, but... Still, it would be flattery. It would do a lot for my ego if a woman was like, you know, could I wish, I wish you were straight so I could hop on that hog of yours. Ride that big, fat, masculine dong. Is that how women talk? <laughs> That's how men talk. All right, uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Why don't you guys email me, show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-66. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. I ask you, does that sound like a threat? Spread the distortion. STD, tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts tomorrow's episode is going to be sideshow exclusive if you want to hear it you got to sign up superfreaksideshow.com otherwise i'll see you back on wednesday until then have a great day bye everybody the U.S. Air Force would like to wish America a very happy new year. We're working to help make 1984 a time of peace and happiness for everyone around the world. It's rewarding work, and you can help. Ask your recruiter how. From all of us, here's hoping the new year will be your happiest year of all. The U.S. Air Force. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at Scrod.net.